Hello and welcome back to the second episode of the Automated Special Series, which is focusing this time on SAP automation and integration with Power Automate. In the second episode, we will use Process Advisor's process mining features to identify business process bottlenecks of Contoso's current purchase requisition process. So the outcome of this analysis will be used to improve the process and to apply potentially uh, automation with the help of uh, Power Automate. So let's start with the Process Advisor overview. Process Advisor lets you understand and improve your business processes. By running simple process recorders, you will be able to capture all the individual steps needed uh, as part of your business process and then invite others to collaborate and submit their own recordings of the same process. This will generate detailed and rich process maps which outline the optimized steps in a process so organizations can create an optimized automation based on those steps. With Process Advisor, you can create a process, record its steps, edit, and then analyze. So it's actually very easy to record your steps, whether you're using a Windows-based application or web-based application. And in the background, it is leveraging Power Automate Desktop to capture all these uh, steps. Then once the recording has been completed, it will analyze that and then you are presented with the individual steps as part of the recording where you will be able to group them into activities and then also potentially remove any uh, sensitive data and screenshots from, from that recording. If you would like to analyze and optimize a departmental business process, then you can invite others to collaborate so that they can also submit their own uh, business process recordings. Once you are done, you will be able to analyze all those recordings where Process Advisor will then present you with a uh, rich process map and in-depth analytics on the process variations, durations per step and per person, and also show you the average uh, time the process for each variation has taken or overall across all the recordings. So in order to bring all these automation capabilities and options a little bit closer to a real world scenario, I'm using a fictitious uh, purchase requisition process for Contoso Retail. Here we have a sample reporting hierarchy you will typically find in retail stores and other industries such as process and discrete manufacturing where not every employee gets direct access to ERP-like systems such as SAP because of obvious cost, training and compliance constraints. Missing direct or indirect system access typically leads to processing overhead and inefficiencies. So to demonstrate these inefficiencies, let's have a look at the current purchasing requisition process of our fictitious Contoso retail company. So employees across the retail stores with access to a computer and email request requisitions either for themselves or for their teammates. These requests are done through email and might require multi-follow-ups between the requester and her or his manager until it is submitted to Maria, the store manager. Maria then approves, rejects and oftentimes uh, misses the request because they get unnoticed together with the other hundreds of unread emails in her inbox. But let's say she approves the request and replies to Victoria. Victoria then forwards the email to Conrad, who is the regional purchaser for processing. So Conrad reviews and requests more information regarding required product, uh, cost center, delivery dates and so on. So this communication is then of course going back and forth again uh, between Victoria and Conrad and maybe even including and involving the uh, store manager Maria. From then on, Conrad manually enters each individual requisition in SAP, consolidates and converts them to potential purchase orders later. This process of course looks highly inefficient, so the idea is to use Process Advisor to analyze and potentially optimize that business process. We start by creating a new process and invite others to contribute and to supply their own uh, process recordings in order for us to see then the process variety. Once the recordings are in, the individuals can then go ahead and say those activities grouped together make for instance here the creation of a purchase requisition, sending status on Outlook, so just classify the different uh, process actions here uh, and then potentially also remove 
any sensitive uh, screenshot or data which was captured as part of that uh, Power Automate desktop recording. So once the recordings have been uh, annotated, you will be able to analyze those recordings, which will produce uh, very rich uh, process maps, as you can see here, combined with some in-depth analytics on the variations and individual process uh, activity times. This variant here took 16 uh, minutes. And if you compare this to Victoria's process, it looks uh, much uh, simpler, the process, and it only took five minutes here, for instance. So the average processing time of this fictitious uh, purchase requisition process is around 11 minutes. The team has decided that this has, of course, to be improved, and also the business process steps needs to be aligned and optimized. So they've decided to optimize or even redesign part of the business process and include Power Automate, both uh, DPA-based processing with cloud flows and RPA-based processing with uh, desktop flows as part of the overall uh, process. So let's review the optimized business process. So in the first step, Victoria is collecting the purchasing demand from her team and creates new purchase requisitions in a custom-developed power-up that has been embedded into the Microsoft Teams experience. Once the required information has been entered, she submits her request to Maria, the store manager. The background approval process has been defined in a Power Automate cloud flow and runs automatically up on submissions for approval. Maria receives a Teams notification and decides whether to approve, reject the requisition or ask for more information. In case of an approval, the Cloudflow will send a Teams notification to Victoria and then forwards the purchase requisition data to an RPA bot built with Power Automate Desktop that will create a respective purchase requisition in SAP. Once the bot completes, it hands the results back to the calling Cloudflow and posts a success message to the procurement Teams channel. From there on, Conrad, the regional purchaser, can convert a purchase requisition to a purchase order and continue with the regular procurement process. So let's have a look at the purchase requisition process after the automation and optimizations have been applied. The process starts as a Teams conversation between Clara and her line manager, Victoria. Victoria uses a custom power-ups which have been developed by a citizen developer that has also been pinned as a tab into the Teams experience. Under the configuration settings, the purchaser can set different categorizations and master data that are required later on to create uh, purchase acquisitions through a Power Automate desktop bot. So back in the overview, Victoria now goes ahead and creates a new purchase requisition on behalf of Clara Vidal ordering a new click and collect monitor for the New York store. Here you see the defaults which are coming from the configuration page we have seen earlier. Now she goes ahead and saves the record which creates a new purchase requisition a record in Dataverse with the status of draft. Now she creates also the purchase order lines with equipment or products she would like to procure. And here we have the first SAP touch point which is actually doing a live lookup to an SAP endpoint exposing product lists. This is using a custom connector that is pointing to the SAP ES5 uh, demo system. Let's review that in SAP. So here you can see the ES5 uh, demo system and the product which is a, a broad screen 22 uh, HD. So back in our power up, this functionality has been implemented uh, through a custom connector, which was actually the third episode of this automated special series. Uh, here as a reminder under data custom connector, and if you edit that custom connector, you will see that the endpoint is uh, list products, allowing us to retrieve a list of products from an SAP backend, which in our case is the ES5 demo system. Here's the OData result, listing all products. And if we head over to test and provide some filter, let's say for a specific product, HD 1255 in our case, which is our broad screen 22 inch uh, HD monitor. Click on test operation. 
And this will result in a specific product being returned as a JSON payload. Okay, so the next connectivity option is hidden behind this on hand inventory uh, icon. Once I click that, this is calling then a Power Automate Cloudflow that uses the SAP ERP connector to reach out through a BAP to an SAP backend system. Here we see that it's the BAPI is called BAPI Material Availability and it supplies a material, plant and unit of measure as parameters. And here we see we have uh, uh, submitted the broad screen 22HD with four plant 0001 with the uh, unit of measure each and this has returned 413 uh, items in stock. Now to demonstrate that this is a live lookup, let's increase our stock level of the board screen 22HD. We currently have 413. Now let's add another 250 items to the stock. Let's go ahead and refresh here. And we should have 663. Perfect. say quantity of one. Now the next step is to submit this for approval. This will route the request to Victoria's manager who is the uh, store manager Maria. Maria will receive a notification in her team's experience with the purchase requisition request including also a direct deep link to the power up and the respective record. We can see okay New York uh, click and collect monitor. She goes ahead and approves. This creates another notification, this time for Victoria, informing her that the purchase requisition has been approved. And Victoria returns back to Clara, informing her as well that the monitor has been uh, added as a purchase requisition. All without leaving the team's experience, no email, no other applications to be opened, everything in the context of the day-to-day -day collaboration within Teams. So the data for those purchase requisitions, they are stored in a custom uh, data entity or data table in Dataverse. Here you see the preview of the purchase requisition header. And now this Dataverse table is uh, automatically monitored by a uh, Cloudflow trigger. That triggers whenever purchase requisition has been approved. So the status has been set to uh, approve. Then we leverage uh, Azure Key Vault for secure credential stores to retrieve the SAP system client username password. And finally, we call a, a desktop flow with Power Automate Desktop, feeding in all the parameters that are necessary to run that automation. So let's head over to Power Automate Desktop and see where this data is being used. I'm passing in some variables. And then here we have the main processing flow, which has been separated into individual subflows. Uh, each and every subflow is serving a specific purpose. Here we see initializing a bot opening the SAP GUI with the, the SAP shortcut the EXE and then the next one is creating the purchase requisition header which is using the run VB script action to create a new record and this script has been recorded through the SAP recording engine and here we head then over to the purchase requisition lines which can be of course multiple that's why we are applying them in a for each loop. Same process previously recorded SAP script and then we have uh, replaced the hard-coded values with Power Automate desktop variables. Once the purchase requisition has been created in SAP we go ahead and extract the uh, latest purchase requisition number from the UI. And the last step in that process is uh, the finalization, which closes all SAP windows. All right, now back in our power up, if we hit refresh, we'll see that the status has changed to approve. And this status, because it is uh, changed in a Dataverse table, we can monitor that through the cloud flow that triggers then the desktop flow, uh, entering the purchase requisition data into SAP. And this process is now leveraging the VB script to enable a very fast uh, playback experience, as you can see here. Providing cost center, the GL account, requisitioner, purchase group, 
all the configuration items we had in the power up when we went to that uh, configuration section which is configurable per teams channel now once the process uh, finishes you will see here that the sap requisition number is also returned from the desktop flow so let's open the uh, flow history here in the dry block and create sap purchase requisition desktop flow you see the result of the desktop flow uh, has submitted the requisition number and if you refresh now we will see that requisition number uh, being updated in the dataverse record so we can always refer back to that and this concludes the overall demo that leverage power apps power automate power automate desktop dataverse and all that embedded in a microsoft teams experience so you have seen this is a much simpler user experience integrated with low-code, no-code tooling directly together with the collaboration suite in Microsoft Teams, combining Power Automate, both the digital process automation and robotic process automation to drive those uh, experiences, which will reduce a lot the communication time, but also uh, they are less error prone and they free up uh, valuable resources to spend more time on value adding tasks like uh, consolidating purchase requisitions or purchase order and do some supply chain uh, relevant uh, planning activities as well. So the team has run another process advisor project and came up with an overall average processing time of that new process of roughly seven minutes and is of course quite happy with that uh, result.